Hi, I'm Michelle Obama. Welcome to Mondays with Me, a series of stories with PBS Kids and Penguin Random House. I'm delighted to share today's book, Oh, The Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. This is a book about you and how you have the power to do and become anything you want. If only you keep trying. Let's begin. Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know and you are the guy who'll decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not so good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along, you'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll go. Wow. <laughs> you'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a pickly perch and your gang will fly on. You'll be left in a lurch. You'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump and the chances are then that you'll be in a slump. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun. Unslumping yourself is not easily done. You will come to a place where the streets are not marked. Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're darked. A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right, or right in three quarters, or maybe not quite, or go around back and sneak in from behind? Simple it's not, I'm afraid you will find, for a mind maker upper to make up his mind. You can get so confused that you'll start into race down long wiggled roads at a breaknecking pace and grind on for miles across weirdish wild space headed I fear toward a most useless place the waiting place for people just waiting 
waiting for a train to go or a bus to come or a plane to go or the mail to come or the rain to go or the phone to ring or the snow to snow or waiting around for a yes or a no or waiting for their hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting, waiting for the fish to bite or waiting for wind to fly a kite or waiting around for Friday night or waiting perhaps for their Uncle Jake or a pot to boil or a better break or a string of pearls or a pair of pants or a wig with curls or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying, you'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. With banner flip flapping once more, you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky, ready because you're that kind of guy. Oh, the places you'll go, there is fun to be done there are points to be scored, there are games to be won, and the magical things you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all. Fame, you'll be famous as famous can be, with the whole wide world watching you win on TV. Except when you don't, because sometimes they won't. I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too, games you can't win, cause you'll play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not, alone will be something you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you will go though the weather be foul. On you will go though your enemies prowl. On you will go through the hack and cracks howl, onward up many a frightening creek, though your arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far and face up to your problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact. And remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft and never mixed up your right foot from your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarter percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. So, be your name Bucksbound or Bixby or Bray or Mordecai Alley Van Alley O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So get on your way. The end. One of my favorite books. I read this book over and over to my girls when they were little. I hope that helps you get up and on your way. You can do anything. Thanks again. I am excited to share today's book, Can I Be Your Dog? by Troy Cummings.
A heart-tugging adoption story told through letters written by a dog looking for his forever home. Let's get started. Can I be your dog? It's the first letter. Dear people at Yellow House, that's the Yellow House. Wolf, can I be your dog? I am potty trained and I have my own squeaky bone. Squeak, squeak. Also, I love to play. I see you have a cat, but I'm willing to work with you. Who's a good dog? I am. Sincerely, Arfi. P.S. I know every house on Butternut Street, but I asked you first. <gasps> Here's the reply. Dear Arfi, we're so sorry, but you cannot be our dog. Our cat is uh, allergic to dogs. Good luck in your search, the Honeywells. Oh, his first letter was rejected. How sad. Let's see, Arfi tries again. Second letter. Dear butcher lady, can I be your dog? I think your butcher shop would be a great place for a puppy like me. I could keep the floor nice and clean. Arfy. There you go. And you see how the mail lady is delivering each of the letters. What do they say? Look, pal. Uh-oh. I've got a bone to pick with you. Last time I let a dog into my shop, a dozen meatballs went missing. Sorry, but there's no way I'm taking in a pooch. Sign Veronica Shank, Butcher. P.S. No hard feelings. Enjoy these dried giblets and good luck finding a home. Aww, got rejected again. But he's enjoying those treats. Here's his third letter, third try. Dear Fire Station Number 5, Can I be your dog? I can fetch your boots. Plus, let's just say I know my way around fire hydrant. I've sniffed out every single one on Butternut Street and yours is the shiniest. There goes the postal worker delivering that letter to the firehouse. Let's see what they say. Dear applicant, ooh, this is official. Dear applicant, Thank you for your interest in working with the Butternut Street Fire Station. Unfortunately, the position of Fire Dog has already been filled. We will keep your letter on file. Best wishes in your search. Station number five. Hmm, that was an official no. But he found that fire hydrant, you see. <laughs> All right, here's his next try. Dear Junkyard Guy, I'm not gonna lie, you're my next to last choice, but these past few days have been rough. Rough, rough, rough. <laughs> so please, can I be your dog? I don't eat much and I can bark if people try to steal your junk and stuff. Hopefully yours, Arfie. It's getting desperate. Let's see what the junkyard people say. Hmm. Oh, short and sweet. They said, dear mutt, get lost. Aw, that was harsh. Oh, all right. The last try. The letter says, dear last house on Butternut Street. Can I be your dog? I see that your yard is full of weeds and your windows are broken and there's a funny smell, but I'm not picky, just lonely. Signed, Arfi. Oh, this is his last hope. Oh, what happens next? Oh, the letter was returned to cinder. Nobody lives at that address. And Arfie is sad. He just howled.
Oh! Oh, he's so alone. And it's raining. And it's cold. And it's dark. Oh. But he wakes up and look. He's got a letter with a little pink heart on it. It says to Arfie. I can't wait to see what it says. It says, Dear Arfie, can I be your person? I need a friend who will be with me no matter what. Snow, rain, heat, or gloom of night. And I see that you already know everyone on Butternut Street. I know you'll make a first class partner with hugs and head scratches. Mitzi Whipple. Letter carrier. P.S. She says, if you agree, meet me at the big blue mailbox. <gasps> Let's see what happens. The letter carrier is waiting. She's looking. Does she see Arvi? Do they find each other? <gasps> Look, they found each other. Aww. And here's his letter. Dear Mitzi, you know what? My tail has been wagging ever since I got your note. My answer is yes. Truly yours, Arfi. P.S. Woof. <laughs> oh, I think they lived happily ever after. Wow. That was a tearjerker. I was worried for Arfie for a second, but luckily someone gave him a home. And guess what? I have a little surprise. We've got two special guests. Look! I've got two of my, my, my best pals here with me, Sonny and, and Bo, uh, who wanted to join today. They enjoyed that book. I hope you guys did, did it too. Um, they're lucky. They've got uh, a lot of people who love them and there are a lot of dogs out there who need the same kind of love. So I hope you had fun with today's reading. Um, I think this is our last time together. I'm going to miss you all, but it's been fun reading to you guys each week. I want you all to keep reading. Um, moms and dads, keep reading to your little ones and stay safe and stay inside until this uh, pandemic is over. And I hope to see you guys real soon. Take care. Love you all. Bye-bye. Say bye. Bye. See you later.